Willis, I didn't want you here today. The lawyer's coming for the company. I'm going to sell my soul, or rather feet. $500 for the pair, you know. With you, the feet have nearly been the soul. And if you're going to sell them to the devil, I want to see you do it. When's he coming? Oh, I have suspect you knew and came on purpose to try and help me drive a better bargain. Well, if it's true, yours are no common feet. The lawyer don't know what it is he's buying. So many miles you might have walked, you won't walk. You haven't run your 40 orchids down. What does he think? How are the blessed feet? The doctor's sure you're going to walk again? Well, he thinks I'll hobble. It's both legs and feet. They must be terrible. I mean, to look at. I haven't dared to look at them uncovered. Through the bed blankets, I remind myself of a starfish laid out with rigid points. The wonder is it hadn't been your head. It's hard to tell you how I managed it. When I saw the shaft had me by the coat, I didn't try it too long to pull away or fumble for my knife to cut away. I just embraced the shaft and rode it out until White shut off the water in the wheel pit. That's how I think I didn't lose my head. My legs got their knocks against the ceiling. Awful. Why didn't they throw off the belt instead of going clear down in the wheel pit? They say some time was wasted on the belt. Oh, the streak of leather doesn't love me much because I make him spit fire at my knuckles the way Ben Franklin used to make the kite string. That must be it. Some days he won't stay on. That day a woman couldn't coax him on. He's on his rounds now with his tail in his mouth, snatched right and left across the silver pulleys. Everything goes the same without me there. You can hear the small buzz saws whine, the big saw caterwaul of the hills around the village as they both bite the wood. It's all our music. One ought, as a good villager, to like it. No doubt it has a sort of prosperous sound, and it's our life. Yes, when it's not our death. We make that sound as if it wasn't so with everything. What we live by, we die by. I wonder where my lawyer is. His train's in. I want this over with. I'm hot and tired. You're getting ready to do something foolish. Watch for him, will you, Will? You let him in. I'd rather Mrs. Corbin didn't know. I'm boarded here so long she thinks she owns me. You're bad enough to manage without her. And I'm going to be worse instead of better. You've got to tell me how far this has gone. Have you agreed to any price? Mm -hmm. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Well, you needn't look at me. I don't believe you. I told you, Willis, when you first came in. Now, don't you be hard on me. I have to take what I can get. You see, they have the feet, which gives them the advantage in the trade. Can't get back the feet in any case. But your flowers, man. You're selling out your flowers. Yes, that's one way to put it. All the flowers of every kind everywhere in this region for the next 40 summers. Call it 40. But I'm not selling those. I'm giving them. They never earned me so much as one cent. Money can't pay me for the loss of them. No, the 500 was the sum they named to pay the doctor's bill and tied me over. It's that or fight. And I don't want to fight. I just want to get settled in my life such as it's going to be and know the worst. Or best, it may not be so bad. The firm promised me all the shucks I want to nail. But what about your flora of the valley? Oh, you have me there. But that, you didn't think that was worth money to me. Still, I own it goes against me not to finish it for the friends it might bring me. By the way, I had a letter from Burroughs. Did I tell you about my Cypripedium regini? He says it's not reported so far north. Oh, there. There's the bell. He's rung. But you go down and bring him up and don't let Mrs. Corbin. Well, we'll soon be through with it. <laughs> I'm tired. Well, and how is Mr. Uh, you must excuse me. I dropped in at the mill and was detained. Looking round, I suppose. Yes. Well, yes. Hear anything that might prove useful? Why, here is Annie. What do you want, dear? Come stand by the bed. Tell me, what is it? Guess. Oh, guess which hand? My, my. Well, once on a time, I knew a lovely way to tell for certain by looking in the ears, but I forget it. Er, let me see. I think I'll take the right. That's sure to be right, even if it's wrong. 
<laughs> Come, hold it out. Don't change. A ram's horn orchid. A ram's horn. What would I have got, I wonder, if I had chosen left? Hold out the left. Huh. Another ram's horn. Where did you find those? Under what beech tree? On what woodchucks know? <coughs> were there no others? There were four or five. I knew you wouldn't let me pick them all. I wouldn't. So I wouldn't. You're the girl. You see, Annie has her lesson learned by heart. I wanted there should be some there next year. Of course you did. You left the rest for seed and for the backwoods woodchuck. You're the girl. Ram's horn orchid seed pot for a woodchuck sounds something like. Better than farmer's beans to a discriminating appetite, though the ram's horn is seldom to be had in bushel lots. It doesn't come on the market. But Annie, I'm troubled. Have you told me all? You're hiding something. That's as bad as lying. You ask this lawyer, man, and it's not safe with a lawyer at hand to find you out. Nothing is hidden from some people, Annie. You don't tell me where you found a ram's horn. You didn't find a yellow lady slipper. Uh, what did I tell you? What? I'd blush, I would. Oh, don't you defend yourself. If it was there, where is it now, the yellow lady slipper? Well, wait. It's common. It's too common. Common? The purple lady slipper's commoner. I didn't bring a purple lady slipper to you. To you, I mean. They're both too common. <laughs> I've broken any of, of gathering bouquets. Not fair to the child. Can't be helped, though. Pressed into service means pressed out of shape. Somehow I'll make it right with her. She'll see. She's going to do my scouting in the field over stone walls and all along the wood and by a river bank for water flowers. A floating heart with small leaf like a heart and at the sinus underwater a fist of little fingers all kept down but one and that thrust up to blossom in the sun as if to say you, you're the heart's desire. Annie has a way with flowers to take the place of what she's lost. She goes down on one knee and lifts her faces by the chin to hers and says their names and leaves them where they are. <clears throat> well, Annie, go, dearie. Our affair will wait. The lawyer man is thinking of his train. He wants to give me lots and lots of money before he goes because I hurt myself, and it may take him I don't know how long. I'll put our flowers in water first. We'll help her. The pitcher's too full for her. There's no cup. Just hook them on the inside of the pitcher. Now run. Get out your documents. You see, I have to keep on the good side of Annie. I'm a great boy to think of number one, and you can't blame me in the place I'm in. Who will take care of my necessities unless I do? A pretty interlude. I'm sorry, but my train... Uh, luckily, terms are all agreed upon. You only have to sign your name right... There. You will stop making faces. Come round here where you can't make them. What is it you want? I'll put you out with Annie. Be good or go. You don't mean you will sign that thing on red. Make yourself useful then and read it for me. Isn't it something I've seen before? You'll find it is. Let your friend look at it. Yes, but all that takes time, and I'm as much in haste to get it over with as you. But read it, read it. That's right. Draw the curtain. Half the time, I don't know what's troubling me. What do you say, Will? Don't you be a fool, you crumpling folks' legal documents. Out with it if you've any real objection. Five hundred dollars. What would you think, right? A thousand wouldn't be a cent too much. You know it, Mr. Lawyer. The sin is accepting anything before he knows whether he's ever going to walk again. I think... It smells to me like a dishonest trick. I think... From what I heard today and saw myself, you would be ill advised. What did you hear, for instance? Now, the place where the accident occurred. This is between you two, apparently. Where I come in is what I want to know. You stand up to it like a pair of cocks. Go outdoors if you want to fight. Spare me. When you come back, I'll have the paper signed. A little pencil do? And please, your fountain pen. Why don't you hold my head up from the pillow? I wash my hands. I'm no match. No, and don't pretend to be. You're doing the wise thing. You won't regret it. We're very sorry for you. Who's we? Some stockholders in Boston? I'll go outdoors by gad and won't come back. Willis, bring Annie back with you when you come. 
Uh, yes. Thanks for caring. Don't mind Will. He's savage. He thinks you ought to pay me for my flowers. You don't know what I mean about the flowers. Don't stop to try to now. You'll miss your train. Goodbye.